of time's beginning. All was dark. Alright everybody, here we go. This is what we've all been waiting for. This is my first time sitting down and uh, playing the game. Uh, I, I usually make a lecture with uh, the videos I do, telling you guys a little bit of something about the Vikings or the Norse gods, but uh, today I'm just freestyling this first uh, 15 minutes of the game here. And uh, just saying my first thoughts in the first 15 minutes and more videos will come uh, later on. And from this green came the giant people. So this is, uh, they're telling about the start of the universe here um, with uh, the only existing being there was Ymir, who was killed. And his bones made the earth and his brains made the clouds. Uh, but Ymir, actually directly translated from Old Norse, just means sound. Uh, before there was anything existing in the universe, there was Ymir, there was sound. So, so some of the experts think there was some knowledge of the Big Bang or some kind of empty void. Um, so pretty cool there, um, but I'll go into that in other videos. Where do we go? Also, I thought I'd maybe take this time to uh, to speak about who I am. Uh, so I'm just a regular dude, really. I'm a Norwegian, but um, lived uh, quite a bit of my life in America. But um, uh, have a master's degree in history, a bachelor's degree thesis was in the Old Norse influence of the English language. Master's degree was uh, on specifically the uh, spiritual practices of, uh, of the Old Norse uh, pagans that survived after the Christianization. So um, that's really where my specialty is. Um, but really when we say uh, who's a specialty, in, uh, in, in uh, the Viking Age, we really have no idea. It's saying, like, who's the expert is like saying, uh, oh, you're a doctor, but a doctor, or you could be a brain surgeon, or you could be, you know, a dermatologist or something. So, so that's the big difference there. Um, and, and, and knowing about the Vikings is all the same. I'm great with certain things, like the gods and, like, uh, the spiritual practices, um, but um, I'm definitely not... Uh, there are other people who know more about the archaeology and, and things like that than I do, and the uh, and the battles and kings and stuff like that. So, but you know, anyone who is uh, an expert, just like anyone is a doctor, has a pretty well versed um, knowledge of the Viking uh, culture, just like a doctor has a pretty well versed knowledge of uh, medicine. So those arm rings that you see him having, that's, uh, that's, uh, was given as an oath, um, for promises with a chieftain or something, or anyone really who you wanted to, uh, get, make, have an oath, um, that you showed loyalty to was, um, given one of those arm rings, and again, I'll do another video about the history of that later on. Having a little dance in here, that's alright. You know, we don't know how the Vikings danced at all, but um, we do know Scandinavian folk dance, um, and this looks pretty pretty similar to that, which they even still do in Norway these days. Um, so it, it probably could have been the same in uh, pagan times when the Vikings did it, but uh, no way to know for sure. Can't say I enjoy dancing like that, though. Okay, fuck off. What do we do next? Oh, you can dance some other places too, huh? Well, here he's just dancing like a drunk ass. He's dancing like a drunk white girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
That's Don't Sigurd. He'll show up on, later on in the game. Looks like it's the big brother. Oh, what a piece. That must be worth two sturdy long chips. Give it here. I'll pass it on. My father asked me, Sigurd. Suit yourself. But you're not getting any mead. Like a Seder works through my hammer. <laughs> yeah. And I just like to explore on this. I'll probably edit the video down. Ah, there we go. That must be Sigurd's father. When you speak with the king, hold it up oh, to nope. the light. Show him the fine details. See there? I etched his name in runes on the outer bath. You'll show him? Mm -hmm. You are just like your father, little berserker. Skull to you. Skull! You see? She agrees. Oh, what do you play with? Play with the ball. Okay. Exploring. You're not allowed to really go around and explore, but it looks like you're supposed to go go give the arm ring to the king. So you have the ring? Good. This was worn by your grandfather in a battle on the northern way. Mother? Yes. Can we show to get the can stones and stack this today? That's a good idea. The can stones? That's, That's cool. I've heard that those show up later on in the game. But that was more of a Celtic thing, actually. We don't uh, have a lot of those in, uh, in Scandinavia. We do today, actually. We stack stones, but it's more of like a, a marker spot for when we're walking in the mountains so you don't get lost. Um, but uh, cairns, uh, they were a specific uh, Celtic thing that we find a lot in, uh, in um, you know, Ireland and Scotland and the dolmens and, and the standing stones, all those kinds of things. Abel, wait. Skull! Custodia! The true king of Burgafolga! Tonight, we are May our clans be forever bonded in friendship. And I've mentioned and this love. before. Clan is like a Scottish word. Um, in the Viking world, in Old Norse, the word would be at, um, not now clan. Now forever, I am pledged to you. <laughs> Hearken well in Hall of Kings. Ah. On ocean steed, my words gain wings. And this was a very, very popular thing too that you will see in a lot of the Viking sagas. Um, you know, there was always some poetry, there was always some songs, and it was usually one or two people who uh, who specifically made a long poem for a king um, or a chieftain or something. Um, and sometimes it can. You know, it can do very good. Uh, it can do very good for the social status too. If you make a nice poem, like for example, Egil and uh, King Harald in uh, in Egil Saga, uh, Harald wanted to kill Egil for a whole bunch of reasons. But Egil basically sung a sung a loud uh, song. <laughs> he spent all night composing the poem, and uh, and uh, it was a beautiful poem. And then uh, Harald didn't want to kill Egil anymore. He let him go. So um, poems can really, really uh, do a lot to boost um, and and uh, and uh, like make the social social status better and uh, and very powerful for things like that. What have we got going on here? It is foretold. The curtains Sala. are raised. Nothing is true until it is. It sounds like the vulva or the seer there. It's a little. So I've seen this scene before, 
There's a couple of wrong things with this that would never happen. First of all, um, kids would never be harmed. Kids would never, ever be harmed in the Viking world. They were regarded as, you know, uh, they'd call them blöt. Uh, so kids and also women, the word for them was blöt, and it basically means soft. And if you hurt anyone that was considered soft, like a child or a woman, it would bring huge dishonor to you for the rest of your life. Um, so women and children would not be harmed like this. Uh, most of the time when we read in the sagas, if there was an attack on a hall like that, it would be the men. They would tell the women and children to leave the hall, get to safety, and then the men would start fighting. Um, so this is not super realistic. Also, um, it was it was very frowned upon to attack others uh, at night time, like to kill at night time. Um, it was, it was uh, bad omens came with that, and that was the same for a lot of uh, other places in Europe too. There's a pretty big misconception in uh, in the medieval times about uh, Norway and, and the Viking Age there that it was so cold and frozen like this. And I see the snow here on the ground, and I see the northern lights. And for the northern lights, it has to be extremely, extremely cold and very dark, so it would be in the middle of the winter. But the Viking Age was actually a warm period in history. At some points, it was even warmer than our temperature today in the year 2020, even with all this global warming. So, um, you know, the Viking Age would have not had a lot of snow, and it would definitely not have had much northern lights unless you were very, very far up north. Uh, even now, where I'm from in Norway is, is in the south, and we, I, I've never really seen the northern lights there too strong. You have to go all the way up north to where it's the coldest uh, points of winter there. So in the Viking Age, it would not have been happening that much. <laughs> The wolf. up and the animus starts kicking in and we get back into modern times. Just like all the other Assassin's Creed's. Uh, what the hell is that? I'm seeing two different data streams overlapped go. in the same DNA. Not sure why. Fix this or pull me out. I can parse the streams of the filter. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Are we? I don't know what happened, but I can work around it. You'll have to pick a stream to keep things stable. There's a third option too. I can let the Animus modulate your identity based on signal strength. It's up to you. Default. The Animus will represent the stronger female or male ah. memory stream, depending on its current strength. You may choose another option at oh, any no, I time. I want to be a male. Play I the male be a woman Viking. Play the male Ivor memory stream. You may choose another option at any time. Alright, I'll lock it in and push ahead. To a time where these streams are more synchronized. So as I mentioned just before in this video, guys, harming a woman in the Viking Age would have been very, very uh, dishonorable, it'd be considered. Um, 
So, women in battle. We, we do have records of some women fighting, but most of the time the men would just let them be or, um, or disarm them. Uh, it's very, it, it would be very rare that we would see a woman actually fighting with another man. And I've made a huge video about that that caused a lot of fuss between people, but we have actually no evidence that uh, women came into battle with other men. Uh, but they did protect themselves if they were under attack. Um, that's when they would be involved in combat sometimes. But like I said, most of the time the men would be just trying to disarm them and not harm a woman. Because it would be considered uh, very dishonorable. But I know you would defy me to the death, fighting for a glorious end. That I yeah, I'll probably about. stop here. And um, that's the first 15 minutes. It looks like you're an adult now, but stay tuned for more videos. And uh, my future videos will have a lot more commentary, and I'm going to give you a lot more historical background. I was just kind of freestyling for this one, just uh, just to get like a reaction video. Anyway, that's it for today. We see us next time. Hey, the wolf kiss is no more. That name is dead to this world.